Hey, what's going on, Roleplay Sister Bard here, and welcome back to the corner. We just had a massive influx of subscribers, so welcome to all of you new guys. Anyhow, what have we got for you guys today? Can you do Tremor from Mortal Kombat, please? Oh, I haven't done one of these in ages. Alright, Tremor it is. Let's rock. So for those amongst you who are just role players and you're just looking for a good elemental themed character and you think that Earth might be a particular route you want to take, then just take it for what it is. For those of you who fall into the category of both role player and gamer, however, the task is to try to stay on point and get as close to the character as it has been presented to us. Hopefully then with a bit of luck we're going to get something that's going to appeal to as many different people as possible. So we try to keep this around the mid levels to actually make the characters playable. So we're going to go with 5 levels of Way of the Open Hand Monk and 7 levels of Wild Magic Sorcerer. The important techniques to consider in Way of the Open Hand are your prone and pushback effects. And when you're using your Wild Magic Sorcery this covers most of your elemental stuff. So you don't actually have to worry about getting Way of the Four Elements. You're getting more variation when it comes to your Sorcerer levels. Additionally your Sorcerer levels in Wild Magic give you things like Tide of Chaos which allow you to get advantage on your attack rolls. Tremor might seem like he changes really drastically between his variations, but it's not necessarily the case. Tremor's variations are more inclined to change the properties of his pre-existing techniques, allowing him to get greater advantages in certain areas. Xanathar's Guide to Everything offers you the Magic Stone cantrip. This is a great representation of your Rock Toss ability. Magic Stone is a fairly moderately damaged cantrip, but the important thing to remember is that you're not using it necessarily in one action. You get to stagger it over a number of turns. So if there are instances where you don't need to use a Magic Stone at that point, then you can save them for later rounds when you might actually require them. On screen you'll see Tremor using his Ground Pulse technique. Well, it's his EX Ground Pulse technique, but semantics. Anyway, a great representation for this is going to be Earth Tremor. This rather appropriately named spell is another little gem that comes out of Xanathar's Guide to Everything. It doesn't do huge damage, but the real prize is the prone effect that comes with it, and the fact that it does 10 foot of difficult terrain as well. Difficult terrain affects movement speed, getting up from prone affects movement speed. This makes Earth Tremor a great little tool for giving your party some breathing room when it comes to melee attackers. Also, it's a technique that remains the same from variation to variation, so there's a nice little bonus as well. So now that we've got the basic moveset that you'll be using for your D&D character out of the way, we can start moving on to the variations. As we've said before, mostly it's just the properties that change and a few different damage types. But like so many other things, a small change to one thing can make a big difference later on. So the thing that's unique about Aftershock is it offers up the Earth Shake ability. This can be done either on the ground or it can be done from the air and in both instances the properties of the move change. The aerial version is an instant which usually catches opponents off guard. The grounded version however has a delay on it which happens after a number of seconds. So in both of these instances we can actually get away with using our Earth Tremor spell a second time. Mechanically this technique doesn't really differ that much from Ground Pulse, but it's the way in which it's applied that does. The Earth Shake is there to give you a link to set up your melee attacks. One of the best ways of doing this can be to use the Quicken Metamagic ability. This allows you to cast Earth Tremor as a bonus action, so you can use your regular action for making two attacks. So we use the bonus action to cast to potentially give us advantage on our melee attacks. Our other option is to use our way of the open hand techniques to push our target back. In doing so, we can then use our bonus action afterwards to create the difficult terrain and the prone effect, which gives us some space between our attackers and the rest of our party. These will be the most primary tools that you'll use for your Aftershock variation, and everything else within it comes from the baseline attributes that we've outlined earlier. Metallic is one of those curious variations that comes with a stance change, allowing you to switch between Gold Skin and Lava Skin. Again, Gold Skin doesn't vary very much from the baseline that we've laid out, but the one key difference is Tremor's projectiles. The Goldskin variation comes with high arcing and low bouncing projectiles. This makes them very difficult to avoid. Tides of Chaos gives you the advantage you need to make these attacks connect. Usually when you're in melee combat and you've got some backup from the rest of your party, getting some advantage isn't too difficult. But when you're playing the spacing game, advantage can be a difficult thing to get. So this is the best time to use Tides of Chaos, when you're going for the ranged approach. This will make it easier for you to chip away at the target's HP before they get into melee combat where you can start doing some serious damage. When you switch to Lava Skin however, this is where you start to really notice the difference. Your attacks start dealing fire damage. This allows you to use a firebolt cantrip in order to simulate the Magmatoss ability. 
Every variation gets a rolling boulder of some description, but it's in the metallic variation that it really shines. The rolling magma is able to launch the opponent, which in game terms means very easy ways in order to link into other attacks. In D&D terms this translates into action economy, which allows you to use your normal action for attacks and allows you to use a bonus action to move the flaming sphere. Also in Lava Skin, Tremor's Magma Punch covers a really wide area. Melf's Minute Meters explode, damaging anything within 5 feet of the point of impact. The nice thing about this spell is that on subsequent rounds after you've cast it, you can use a bonus action to throw the meteors. This is actually quite a fitting spell for the Lava Punch technique and other techniques within Lava Skin. It's efficient both in casting capacity and in your action usage because it's only a bonus action to use and you can use it over multiple rounds. And it also has a small area effect as well. This makes Lava Skin a very good strategy regardless of whether you're dealing with a single creature or with a group of targets. Just to cap off this variation you want something that you can cast on reaction. So Absorb Elements is a very good choice of spell. While the primary effect is meant for resisting elemental damage, it's a very good spell for adding a few extra dice to your melee attacks. It might even be worth risking some fire damage from some of your own techniques in order to add 3 or 4 more dice of damage to your next melee attack. Crystalline is a variation with some decent defense and some useful utilities. It also offers up sound based and sonic vibration style attacks. Shatter is a really good starting point for our crystalline variation. It also deals additional damage to unattended objects made of stone, metal or crystal. Since these are all things that Tremor has an affinity for, it stands to reason that he would know exactly how best to deal with creatures and objects of that nature. 5th edition deals with all of its sound based attacks by classing them as thunder damage. In that respect we can use something like thunderclap to represent our crystal shatter technique. Crystal shatter covers a very wide area that remains very close to the character. Crystal shatter is the kind of technique you would use if you were surrounded, so thunderclap covers the right area when it comes to this scenario. Since crystalline is supposed to be a variation that gives you more flexibility, then Mold Earth becomes a very good utility cantrip. Crystallization is your defensive technique, so it's really a case of pick your poison. If you like Blade Ward, go with Blade Ward. If you like Shield, go with that, or Stone Skin. The extended spell Meta Magic technique is excellent, especially when it only costs one sorcery point to double the duration of any spell that you're using it with. An extra round of resistance from Blade Ward is really good, considering on the following round you'll be able to take whatever actions you like. And if I'm going to be spending at least 100 gold pieces per casting of stone skin, then I would much rather it lasts for 2 hours instead of just 1. A technique that works quite nicely with the shield spell is the sorcerer's bend luck ability. These two work really nicely together because you're increasing your AC with your spell and you're reducing their attack roll using your sorcery points. While it's not guaranteed to work every time in the way something like blade ward does, the odds of it working are very high and if it does happen to work, this technique prevents all of the damage you would have taken instead of just most of it. I wouldn't use it myself, but if you're not bothered about the character using weapons then you might want to consider something like Booming Blade. It's a good sonic based attack, or thunder based attack if you will, that does respectable damage and it works well in conjunction with the monk techniques because you can use those points in order to disengage as a bonus action. It is one of the better melee cantrips out there. And if you don't find something small like a dagger too visually unappealing, then it could be a useful addition to your crystalline variation. It's time to bring this video to a close. Something I really like about the character is the amount of versatility that comes from its specialization. The fact is it doesn't have to just rely on the bludgeoning effects from boulders, it can also use magma for fire damage or it can also use crystalline to get thunder damage. This means you don't have to spend those precious ability score improvements on feats like elemental adept because you have a variety of different damage types that you can use to get around other creatures resistances. I'll sign off by saying that if you want to make the character your own then by all means do so, after all it's going to be your character anyway. Add things like erupting earth, that's a very good spell. If you're going to go up to the higher levels for your sorcerer, then Investiture in Stone is a really good choice as well. I tend to enjoy going sorcerer just because the metamagic quicken ability makes things so much easier when you're trying to combine spellcasting and attacking. But if you don't really like it, then you can go with other classes. 
Conjurer Wizard is a really good choice because of its ability to create things out of nothing. Wizard also gets access to the Stone Shape spell, whereas the Sorcerer doesn't. So if you're looking for a little bit more of a utility character, then you might just want to consider going Wizard instead. And Druid also offers up some interesting options and a few decent spells that you can't get anywhere else. This character doesn't actually require any feats to make it work, so you can just go ahead and pick your favourites, be they something like Sentinel, Warcaster, Martial Adept, or you can just concentrate on your ability scores, whatever suits you. Well guys, that was my Tremor video, a really cool character and a very solid suggestion. If you liked it, be sure to let me know by leaving a like. If you have similar experiences of your own, leave them in the comments down below. And if you're not subscribed yet, why not consider doing so? And I will see you guys next time at the gaming table.